am so glad you're here as we review all the different types of reactions for alcohols that you would have learned about in Organic Chemistry 1. Whether or not you're preparing for an exam or studying for Organic Chemistry 2, this video should help you out. So let's get started. Pause the video now and see if you can come up with the answers for all of these different reactions and then resume the video to check your answers. In Organic Chemistry 1, you learned about multiple different ways to do the same kind of transformation and alcohols provide a perfect example to showcase that. And the reason is that you have to look out for competing reactions, especially as we start to build more and more complex molecules. So for example, one of the easiest ways to substitute an OH group for a bromide is going to be to add HBr. And this follows an SN1 type mechanism where first you protonate the OH group, it would leave as a good leaving group, leaving behind a carbocation. And depending on the stability of that carbocation, you could potentially undergo rearrangements. To avoid that, there are other conditions that you can use as well, like adding tosyl chloride to make this an OTS group, and then adding sodium bromide to do a substitution reaction, that way you could invert the stereochemistry. Additionally, another way that you could avoid that altogether is by using a reagent known as phosphorus tribromide, or PBR3. And in all of these examples, you are replacing the OH group for a bromide, although importantly, you're also inverting the stereochemistry. So you're going from R to S. And the examples with turning alcohols into chlorides are very similar in that we have multiple different ways that we can do this. One of them is by using thionyl chloride or by using HCl and using a Lewis acid catalyst to prevent unwanted types of reactions. And both of these also produce a substitution reaction in which you are inverting the stereochemistry when you'd substitute an OH group for chloride. And just like there are multiple ways to substitute alcohols, there are multiple ways to oxidize alcohols. If you have a primary alcohol, like in this case, and you add it to PCC, or DMP, or even DMSO and triethylamine, each of these are examples of ways to make aldehydes. And the reason that they make aldehydes is because these are all three relatively mild oxidizing reagents, which means that they'll only oxidize to aldehydes. Another example of a stronger oxidant that when reacted with an OH group is sodium dichromate. And this is a much stronger oxidizer, which means that it's gonna fully oxidize even further depending on how much you actually have there, and it will actually turn your alcohol into a full carboxylic acid. So understanding the differences between these oxidizing agents and when it's appropriate to use them because either you want to make an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid is gonna be really important. Next, let's talk about how we do elimination reactions of alcohols. When you have a quaternary carbon that has an alcohol attached to it, we can consider two different pathways for this type of elimination. The first is just by adding concentrated sulfuric acid and heat, and that is going to allow us to eliminate and give us a brand new alkene. So the product of elimination reactions are always alkenes. Another way that you could do this is a two-step process, and that's first by turning this alcohol into an OTS group. So this is called a tosylate for short, and then subsequently, if you add something like sodium ethoxide, then you will do the full elimination where you end up generating the exact same product as before. And the reason you might want to do this is because sulfuric acid could potentially be hydrating things that you don't want it to hydrate because remember, this is actually a reversible reaction and depending on how much sulfuric acid is in there, you can actually go from the elimination alkene back to the alcohol. For the next reaction, it's another oxidation reaction, except notice in this case, you have a secondary alcohol, which means we won't be forming a carboxylic acid, which is why there's only one set of conditions. Although PCC, DMP, and DMSO would also suffice, each of these are going to generate what's known as a ketone, so a carbon to carbon double bond, where the carbonyl carbon has two alkyl chains coming off of it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below and make sure to drop a comment if you have any questions related to organic chemistry. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another video. I'll see you next time.